Wow. Okay. Lawlers, welcome to Cho'Gath for Beginners. This is going to be a quick guide on this guy's abilities, how you might want to play him in lane, how you're going to trade with him, how you're going to chomp down on that enemy opponent and win some games. So we're just in a training mode here. I'd recommend you guys do the same thing if you're just picking up Cho for the first time or kind of a beginner on him. Um, you just want to jump into one of these, auto refresh your mana energy, auto refresh your cooldowns, level up a few times, get to the first three basic levels, and then you want to spawn an enemy dummy just, dummy just in the river over here and have some fun learning the abilities. So to start off with here, his passive carnivore killing an enemy restores 26 health and 3.8 mana. What this means is in lane, every time you kill an enemy creep or even an enemy champion, you're going to get a little bit of health and a little bit of mana back. So this is actually pretty good sustain element to play in Cho'Gath and what that means is if you happen to take a bad trade or you do take a trade and maybe lose 25% of your health bar the more minions and creeps you kill the more you're going to heal up and get that mana back okay so that's a great passive now Cho'Gath as a champ is a bit of like a, a tank damage soaker frontliner for your team he has some crowd control in his kit and a little bit of kind of execute damage with his ultimate which we're going to talk about later on but still very a combo reliant champion in terms of 1v1 in your lane opponent so you're gonna have to get good at tying some of these abilities together but if you do he can be very oppressive so um, runes before we get into the abilities that we're, we're playing here with Cho'Gath most of the time and he is going to be played top lane most of the time um, it's gonna be grasp the and dying you're gonna be playing against a lot of other melee style champions so it's a good opportunity to proc that grasp and get some healing and also permanently increase your health and your size uh, when you do so uh, so it's gonna be really good for your trades in lane and also just playing against those other melee um, duelers up top. Other runes here in that tree are obviously up to you. I'm running Demolish and Conditioning and Overgrowth. These are just the optimal runes for him in terms of win rate. And then in the secondary tree here I have Triumph and Tenacity. So Tenacity is obviously really good on Cho'Gath. You're going to be wanting to try and run people down eventually and use your abilities on them. So first ability here is Vorpal Spikes. Um, pretty basic. It basically just lets Cho'Gath's auto attacks deal more damage and slow the enemy that you're hitting. Okay, so um, normal auto attacks here you can see deal 75 damage. If we learn the E here and I press it, my claws are going to start to glow. My next auto attack actually deals 127. Alright, so it's just a, an empowered auto attack. It has a slow um, which is going to lead into some of the other abilities that we're, wa we're going to want to combo off with that. So the only tip I'll give you guys with the E is it's an auto attack reset and what that means is if you actually auto attack and press E right away you're going to be able to do a second auto attack faster. So you can see there the auto plus the E auto deals 200 damage as opposed to just auto, auto, right? There's a little bit of a time gap in between that. So if I auto auto that's pretty slow so what you want to do is auto e it's a little bit faster and deals more damage okay so that's the big trick with that now in terms of the spikes themselves they actually fire through units so if i use my e here you see they fire through and hit the 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 dummy behind this first one here that's going to be really important when we get to, to landing your full combo on enemy champs whether they're ranged or melee um, remember this slows so if you use it that unit's going to get slowed then you'll be able to run up to them and, and deal more damage okay so that's the E the next ability that you would want to learn in lane uh, you could pick up your W or Q depending on which matchup you're in um, in terms of the order that you're going to max these out you want to max out E and then W and then your Q last okay so let's just pick up W second here feral scream he roars and he silences enemies for about 1.6 seconds in front of him and dealing 75 magic damage so you can see the cone here right it can hit multiple targets as area of effect if you use this on three champions you're going to silence all three of them which is really powerful there's not too many abilities in league that actually silence um, enemy champions and silencing means they can't cast any of their abilities okay so that's really really powerful especially in team fights or skirmishes if they can't cast any abilities for 1.5 seconds 1.6 seconds that could be enough time for your team to really mop them up um, and delete them off the battlefield before they can do anything Okay, so in terms of just using these two basic abilities in terms of a combo, you might want to walk up to your enemy laner, um, or if they're walking up to you to trade, is auto attack E and then press W and then just keep it going with your autos. Okay, the the spikes do your next three autos, so you can trade auto E E 
E and then your claws are going to go back to normal, right? So that's a little mini combo there with two abilities. If we wanted to learn our third basic ability or Q here and do the full combo with Rupture, he ruptures the ground and knocks up enemies for one second, dealing some magic damage and slowing them. So you can see here between these three abilities, there's a lot of kind of mini crowd control um, and utility within Cho'Gath's basic ability kit, right? You have a knock up and a slow, you have a silence, and then you have more area of effect with more slow, right? So pretty powerful three ability kit. Um, when you tie them together, it can deal a lot of damage in lane against the melee or ranged champion if you put them together correctly. So we're going to jump into um, in, in the lane soon here and play against the bot and just tie these three together at a basic level so you guys can see how to do that. But in general, your Q is a skill shot. So it's going to knock people up in a circle. You could potentially hit on the other ring. You could hit two people with it, knock them both up, or you might miss everyone. One, right? It's a skill shot. So in order to land this, it would be ideal if the enemy champ that you're trying to hit is stationary or at least slowed. And that's great for us because in Cho'Gath's kit there's actually a slowing ability. So the way you'd want to open up and start your trades is actually to auto attack, E and slow them, and then while they're slowed you could press Q to knock them up, right? Because they're going to be moving slower so it's easier to hit your Q, okay? So if we spawn just one dummy here, and we're pretending we're going to combo off. The perfect combo would go E W Q, right? So, right, we're going to auto E W Q, and then we could keep going if we want to. That's the very, very basic meat and potatoes combo with them. And again, the strategy behind that is you want to slow them with the E, silence them so maybe they can't dash or use any of their the displacing abilities, right, where they can jump away or jump past you or anything, and then you hit your Q on them. So super easy, right? Auto, E, W, Q, and then keep it going with it, with your other empowered autos. Okay? Super, super simple. So in terms of the R, we're going to level up a few more times here and just learn our R ability. Okay, and again, we're maxing out those E spikes first. So the R is an execute, it's called Feast. And Cho'Gath ravenously feeds on an enemy, dealing a bunch of true damage to champions, or minions, or jungle monsters. So it can be used on basically anything on the map that's an enemy. If it kills the target, Cho'Gath gains a stack, which causes him to grow in size to a max, or, or sorry, and gain 80 max health, okay? Only six stacks can be gained from minions and non-epic jungle monsters. A lot of jargon here. What this means is basically every 80 seconds to a minute you can feast on something and you're going to grow in health and size. And it's unlimited as long as it's on champions past six of those stacks. Okay, so that means that if a game went long enough, it went for an hour, you could essentially become bigger than this Rift Herald. And it's we're going to do a gameplay replay um, eventually where I do some commentary. So hopefully in that game we get bigger than this Rift. We'll actually have to check it in size after. But again, if we even wanted to chomp this with our R, right? We'd say same combo, auto E, W, Q, knock it up, and then just keep dealing damage till it gets to execute range with our with our R. Now, it's not going to show you execute range on uh, creeps like this, but it will show you an execute range on champs so you know when you can gobble them. So you can see there it dealt a thousand damage to that, and we grew in size. So you can see this icon here, one, that means we feasted on one thing so far, and we've gained some 80 bonus health, right? So if we feast Feast on two things, eventually we'll gain more bonus health and more and more and more. We'll keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, so just to show you guys what that is really quick, I'm going to jump to this lane with some minions here and just feast on a bunch of, of these champs, or sorry, a, a bunch of these minions. Now we can only go up to six on minions, right? So we feast, we grew again. Now we have two feast tokens here, right? So we're, we're gained 160 bonus, bonus health. Feast on that one. Now three. Feast on that one. Four, five, six. Okay, so you can see we're getting bigger. We're much bigger than when we started this game. Now, it's going to max out at six on um, creeps like this. So I can't just keep chomping on them to keep gaining. From now on, if I want to keep getting bigger, I'm going to have to do it to, to the enemy champs. Okay, so let's just clear out this wave one more time here. You can see with each R we use now, we're actually not getting any bigger. 
okay so we need to use this on champs to keep gaining size all right but let's just talk about this quick before we jump into the the lane phase here and tie these abilities together how we might want to use this on the dummy and also check to see what that execute uh, icon looks like so auto e w q let's say we did the combo you can see there's that bar as soon as they pass under that bar their health bar is going to have this big red outline around it that basically means they're in chomp range and you'll kill them in one shot with your r okay so you want to save your r with cho'gath as an execute when you see that big red glowing uh, outline and border come up on their character so auto e w q auto auto and then chomp that's going to be your basic all in combo right you're going to auto attack somebody reset it with your e silence them knock them up you got two more empowered autos and then likely you're going to be able to chomp them down after that okay really really cool to do that combo in full unison it will make the enemy champ feel pretty useless now just quickly here while we have the dummy i also want to talk about if you're going to open up a combo with your Q. So a lot of Cho'Gaths while you're learning might feel like it's better to open with the Q and knock them up and then run up to them and then start your other abilities and combos off like that. If you're against a really safe mage or ranged kind of ADC marksman up top or mid, depending on where you're playing, you're right, you may have to use your Q initially to open up that combo. But I'd still recommend, if you can, to still slow that enemy champ if there's creeps in front. So let's just spawn a couple dummies here. Let's say these two first ones was a a creep wave here and this was the enemy champ and they were playing really safe far back you'd still want to try and hit them with the E and slow them okay now right now even though the animations going it's kind of weird it wasn't hitting and slowing so you're gonna have to play around with this in your games and the the direction of the spikes is where you're aiming so if I'm auto attacking this way they're gonna go that way if I'm facing this way they're gonna go that way so you can see they hit now right that'll slow them so I'd still recommend against the range champ trying to walk up and land those spikes once they get slowed you can cue them and then follow up with your W and autos okay so still try and open up all your combos as Cho'Gath with your E and use that slow to land that Q more often later in team fights it's the same thing with your Q you'd want to wait for someone else on your team to hopefully land some kind of a slow or some kind of crowd control and lock somebody into place so it's really easy to follow up with your, with your Q and knock them up even longer and keep them under crowd control okay that's my biggest tips I can give you with with Cho'Gath and his Q try and save it to either decide to keep an engage going with the champ and fall them down or disengage okay don't open with that with that ability in most of your trades it's really easy to dodge and you're gonna waste a lot of mana just kind of spamming your Q and missing so if we take away some of these dummies here, what I mean by an engage or disengage with the with the Q is, let's say this was a melee champ, and I'm going to be able to win this trade auto E W. If I want to keep in this trade, I'm going to Q just behind them. So as I walk up, they're going to get knocked up, right? I'm covering their escape. I'm going to knock them up if they run away. So they're going to have to be forced to either get knocked up or keep fighting me here. If I wanted to disengage after my E and W, what you could do is E W and then press the Q on yourself so as you run away if they want to chase they're going to get knocked up and they won't be able to follow you okay so really easy kind of two decision points with Cho'Gath in lane against the melee champ you're either going to keep the engage going by queuing behind them so they can't run away or you're not going to keep the engage going and you're going to disengage by E, W and then queuing on top yourself and running away so they can't follow you okay if you're against like we said a super far ranged marksman or mage you're gonna have to potentially open the combo up with that Q and then run them down or if you can get lucky or skilled enough to land one of your spikes through a champ and slow them then you might want to follow that up with your Q okay but let's jump into a lane now against an enemy bot and try some of these out and see the damage I'll catch you guys in a second Minions has spawned. All right, so minions are on their way. We've got our starting item here, which is Corrupting Potion. If you wanted to, you could go door and shield. Me, personally, I just like the Corrupting Potion. Um, sometimes I like to do some early recalls or cheater recalls, and I like to have that Corrupting Potion going into kind of that 5 to 10 minute mark to keep my sustain of mana up. So let's check out who we're in lane against here. We're going to pick up the E first. Um, in general, like we will always going to be a Wukong. 
So what we can do in lane here, level 1, we're probably not going to beat most players level 1, but we want to try and use that E to pick up last hits and also, if we can, harass melee champs through the wave. If they want to get in our face and they're not going to trade too aggressively, we can do that auto E combo to them, but most of the time they're either going to run, run away like he did or if they're going to stand and fight you, they're going to be stronger than you level 1. So just keep that in mind. We really want to wait to level 2 or 3 to start trading effectively with enemy champs. So until level 2 or 3, just kind of play chill if you have to. Use your E through the minions while you're last hitting them just to get a little bit of harass off and help you get those last hits and uh, make them pay the price just a little bit for trying to step up. Remember, every time you kill a unit, you're going to heal a little bit. Okay, so we're going to pick a W level 2. Now we might be able to do a mini trade with this Wukong, and that's going to look like auto E W. Okay, so we're just going to walk up to him here. Auto E W and then we're going to disengage and start to walk away. So we dealt about 30% of his health there, that's great. Then we're just going to, while they're on cooldown, look for those last hits and use our passive to get more mana back or get some health here. So you're going to see we're just going to let him trade into us a little bit here so we can show that as we get these last hits, we get a little bit of health and mana back, okay? So we got 23, 30 health there. So again, you wouldn't want to eat these trades. I'm just doing this to show you guys that if you kill a unit with any ability or spell, you're going to gain a little bit of health and mana, okay? So now we're going to pop some corrupting potions. Let's say you're in your lane and it didn't go so hot in the first couple trades. That's cool. Remember, passive is huge on Cho'Gath, it's going to heal you up and it's going to let you do some, some damage and then heal that back up in, in lane, okay? So now that we have our full our full kit here, we're going to start to just heal up with some more Corrupting Potions and by last hitting these creeps, we're going to heal a little bit every time, so that's really good. Now we're going to look to start to maybe do a, a more serious trade with this guy in lane here, okay? So concentrate on those last hits, really important with Cho'Gath because it's going to help you heal back up. You can see we're already almost back up to 70% health, but now we're going to look to auto, E, W, and Q this guy and disengage, okay? That time we want to run away from that Q because he was probably at a point where he might kill us, all right? So we're going to wait. We're going to play passive until our cooldowns are back up, and then we're going to get aggressive again with an auto E, W, Q combo, okay? Trying to go for those last hits when we can. Auto E, W. This time we're going to use the Q to try and keep the engage going, so we put it behind him, but it is an easy ability to dodge. People will dodge it, okay? So just try and focus on landing it effectively with good intentions. If you happen to miss, that's fine. When they're under tower and pressed up like this, you could try and time your Q up when they're about to last hit a minion, like so, and you'll pop that damage off a lot easier. The other way you can do it is you might be able to get them with your W. It actually has a pretty good range, and you can harass them with that while they're trying to last it under turret. Cho'Gath can push waves effectively because all of his abilities are area of effect, so that could be a good option. Again, you can see there, we've got some harass off on him. Um, almost killed him there with the E at the end, but you can use your W and Q um, to higher degrees of efficiency if they're trying to last it under their tower. Again, you probably don't want to open up any combos with Q. You'd want to use it more to, to either disengage or keep an engage going after you've used your E and your W. So here we're just going to try and push this wave in here. Again, you can see every time we kill a minion, we're getting some health and mana back from our passive, which is cool. That kind of just helps out sometimes in lane with a little bit of extra sustain. But we're going to take this chance to recall and start to buy towards our first item and come back to lane and see if we can grab a kill on this guy when we turn level 6, which is going to be pretty fun. So right now the best item uh, in terms of a first item to build on Cho'Gath is the Frostfire Gauntlet, so we're going to build into that. Depending on how much money you have in your first back, you're going to build some different things here. So right now it's kind of weird, uh, a weird amount, so let's just get this in a pair of boots for now. But you'd want to build into that Frostfire, depending on the team comp you're up against, Merc Treads or Plated Steel Caps, and then in terms of your next core item, generally with Cho'Gath it's Thorn Mail. If you're against a full ability power team comp, you might want to do something different. But Frostfire Gauntlet's your first one. Okay, so let's wait to grab level 6. Maybe we'll do a little mini trade here with him with a, an auto attack or something. Right now the minion wave is pretty big so I want to try and clear this minion wave out if I can using my E, my W, and my Q. 
and just heal up some of that health that we lost from tanking those minion waves. Okay, so now that we're level 6, we have that execute ability. We can tie that into the end of a combo if he falls to execute range. So we're going to look for our basic combo if he gets close enough here because he's melee. And then if he's in execute range, we're going to follow that up with an E, or sorry, an R to kill him. Okay, now he's playing pretty safe. So auto, E, W, to, and then we're going to Q just behind him. He's staying. We're just watching his health bar now for that chomp range. Okay, one more auto should do it. There it is. And you're going to just press R on them to chomp them. So you just have to have your cursor over the unit you want to chomp with that R. Okay? But pretty easy all in. And the cool thing about Cho'Gath is you're going to be building him tank most games. There is a variant where you can build him ability power and have even more fun harassing with your Q and W. But in general, you'll still have plenty of damage as tank Cho'Gath. Okay? So to push waves after you kill someone again, you can use all of your abilities in the wave because they're area effect. You can push it in really quick and grab some turret plates for free in most of those matchups where you're going to be able to get a kill and then run them down. All right, Cho'Gath grows in size like we talked about with his passive, so if you don't ever have an opportunity to really kill the enemy champ they're playing too safe, don't be afraid to just chomp a, a unit or a jungle creep or whatever every minute or so just to keep getting more and more powerful. Okay, The first six, it doesn't matter what you chomp, it's still going to give you that scaling, so you want to use it. Okay, so let's say instead of a, oh, let's just do our normal trade with him here. You can see I queued just slightly behind him again to keep this trade going because I want to keep the trade going. If I wanted to disengage, I'd put it on myself. Okay, now let's pretend this wasn't a melee champ and it was a ranged champ. You might have to open up the combo with a Q and he's going for last hit like that. If you hit it, you could keep going. If you missed, then they ran away, whatever, right? But you might have to open up against ranged mages or top laners with a Q to open. But I'd still recommend you try and hit them with an E through minions. It has a little bit of range, the spikes, to slow them down when they're trying to come up to a minion okay so let's see if we can do that here while he's at range so e through a minion when he walks up to try and get that slow off initially okay he's playing really safe right now don't know why so e through a minion missed that time but he came in so we're gonna e w q behind him and then chomp him to finish him off okay guys so the, the big thing about playing Cho'Gath well is just staying under control with yourself, staying calm, and using your E spikes before you try and land that Q. It's very tempting to press Q first and knock them up to start your combo. Just stay calm, start it with your E, and then after that, it's essentially just how well you're using your Q to keep engages going or to disengage, okay? So have fun with Cho. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you have some good success with him in your games, and I'll catch you guys in the gameplay for dummies uh, video that we'll release with him in the next few days.